Hello, I'm Charles Dowding in my garden at Homemakers, Alhampton, between Bruton and Castle Carey, and I want to explain to you more about No Dig, this fantastic way I've developed of growing food, and it's what I've been doing for nearly 40 years now, and as I get older, I'm gaining experience, so I'm actually doing a bit less gardening and more teaching, so that side of my life has become pretty strong and I've noticed the world is getting very interested in no dig growing which is so lovely because it's such a time-saving and efficient way to grow food so let's have a closer look. Here we are and I'm between two beds no dig and dig so every year this is the ninth year of doing it I'm comparing growth between soil which is not disturbed and living organisms in the soil fed on the surface with compost and this one, more traditional in recent terms of digging, putting the compost in the ground, incorporating. And I grow the same vegetables in each bed and compare the growth. And it's always fascinating. I was doing this for six years in my previous garden, so this is 15th year of doing these side-by-side -side trials. And I find it as interesting now as I did at the very beginning, because generally speaking, there's a certain quality about the no-dig vegetables that you don't get there on the dig. And it's a fascinating uh, tool to have for teaching people when they come here, because I do a lot of classes at Homemakers. And you can just see it, I think, almost just by looking at it, the, the quality of soil when you don't disturb it. And what traditional gardeners have found hard with this is that it's less work. And we live in a culture which is, has very strong underlying beliefs that if you don't work hard, you don't deserve a great result. Simply lay organic matter food on top of your soil and it feeds the worms and all the other living organisms in there and they do the work for you. So you're getting equal amount if not better result because they do it better than we can. <laughs> that's the nice thing. So in fact what you're looking at here for example this fennel that's a third planting of this year in this same space because I'm not taking too much out of the soil by not disturbing it and we had before it was spinach and then it was cucumbers and now it's fennel and I've put no more compost on since last December this is nearly October now and I don't use any feeds or fertilizers I don't use any slug pellets when you just let nature do it things life gets a lot easier so I'll show you a bit more about that as we walk around a bit and before anything else I'd like to show you my compost heaps because that's the heart of the garden where the the engine of growth is prepared for the coming year. These are my compost heaps which have seven bays, five by six feet, 1.5 by 1.8 meters, and it takes us about seven weeks to fill each one with waste produce from the garden and also other waste that I scrounge. And uh, I put the dates out here. So we started this one on the 7th of September and it's now the 28th, for example. And that means that we put a lot of stuff in here and it just keeps going down, but it also gets very warm. And you'll see when I pull this out by the steam rising out of the heap. So that's produce that hasn't been in there for very long. And yet it's already turning into compost because <laughs> when you get it warm enough, the um, fermentation happens quite fast. The temperature's around 60 degrees. You need a lot of produce though to do that, a lot of waste. And this is the result where a heap I made uh, and then finished three weeks ago and actually you can see that it's not too soggy it's still quite light and fluffy but pretty warm again as well that's feeling pleasantly warm to the touch so that's still decomposing and that will be there for another month or so and then we'll turn it into here so we do one turn and then further down there is the result of compost we made in the the early summer and spring that's now three and five months old and that will be ready to go on the beds this autumn so the idea is we're using all our waste transforming it into something really valuable for the soil and to see how that transforms into vegetables let's have a look at some no dig carrots over here ah actually just in passing i'll mention to you the um this pile of wood chips because See how it's still warm? It's fermenting very nicely. This only arrived here, uh, I wasn't expecting it, four days ago from a tree surgeon. And you can see how it's getting warm and starting to decompose already. And this is a free resource that's available to a lot of people if you've got somewhere just to 
stock them in your garden because if you leave that for between six and 12 months it can turn into not exactly compost but something pretty nice and dark that I really like to put on my paths actually because paths is all part of the garden and that's feeding the fungi in the soil particularly this is fungal breakdown more than bacterial so it's very good for that part of the soil life and this whole food chain and yeah keep your eyes open there's a lot of free resources like that so let's have a look at the carrots now These carrots I sowed on the 13th of June, so that's three and a half months ago. There was a bed, it was a bed of lettuce actually, and I managed to dry out some drills, sow the seeds between the lettuce. It's a beautiful thing with no-dig because you've got no soil preparation. You can just pop seeds and plants in at any time that is convenient to you, as long as you can find space between plants that are still growing maybe. And because it's no-dig, the, intriguingly, the carrots don't fork so much, they, they go down better just pulling out a couple here just to show you so these are three and a half month old carrots yeah you can see pretty nice variety called berlicum this will be for winter use you can see also how easily they pulled out so this is soil that's not been disturbed in any way it's firm I'm, i can walk on this bed here you know this is something that gardens are not supposed to do this is my carrot bed i'm walking on and the soil is still firm yet open the roots can go down and that is the beauty of it 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 all just happens without us trying too hard i'm keeping this mesh cover on though because there's a horrible pest called carrot root fly and if you want to grow your own food you do need to be very aware of pests um, when they're likely to come most of my garden is not well actually quite a bit is covered now because of insects mainly but you can grow a lot of food without covers and worrying too much about pests. It's just knowing which ones you need to worry about. Let's have a look next at my small garden, just a family sized garden where I can give you an idea of what you might grow in a, in a small space. I'm in a space here, which we call the small or family garden. And the idea is I'm growing three beds of vegetables and each one has about four blocks of different vegetables so 11 or 12 different types of produce available at any one time of year and cropping all the time except in the very depths of winter so in autumn now these are mostly second plantings the beautiful thing with no dig is it's so quick and easy to keep cropping so you can finish one thing and pop in another this was tomatoes here actually until last week and under the tomatoes i popped in those spinach plants so already we can be harvesting spinach like this just taking off the larger outer leaves and the tomatoes were here only very recently so because of being able with no dig that you can put a new crop in while the old one's finishing there's hardly any gap between taking your harvest so there we have a nice selection of spinach leaves next to it is some endive and a lot of salads I harvest like this are taking off the outer leaf, not waiting for a, a big heart to form. And that way you can just keep coming back to the same plants for your harvest. Same here with mustards, for example. These are very pretty red mustards. And they're quite pungent, so you wouldn't want to eat too many. These are green mustards. These will be good in stir fry, actually. And these were sown on the 4th of August, so that's seven weeks ago. They've been only in the ground for five weeks and they've already got that big. There's a bit of salad rocket here as well. So a very wide range of plants. And actually just going on a bit up this direction, there's some bulb fennel, which I'm not going to pick, but there's a bit of coriander. So there's the coriander, which again has been in the ground for about a month. And all being well, that will survive the winter. A little bit of dill. Coriander's very winter hardy. So we've got a lot of flavour there in, in a couple of handfuls. Uh, from this area. Um, this is cauliflowers which are going to survive the winter and will crop next spring. Kohlrabi there which are going to crop this autumn. They followed beetroot. Uh, carrots there which I sow between lettuce. And then here's some of the current beetroot which I do the thing called multi-sowing where you, you, you transplant clumps and then you get some bigger ones some smaller ones you can twist out any at any stage actually but there's one that I'm just harvesting now so this beetroot was sown 
around about three months ago and this followed early potatoes so this is second crop after the potatoes and you can just take them any time you like for eating now or you could some I'll leave to grow and then they'll be good for eating in the winter as well so this is not only about summer food you know this is food all year round and if we have a look at the leeks here so these are hardy plants and I'll see if I can cut one out these are multi-sown actually that's a bit of a shame to do that <laughs> I should have used a trial to it a bit more carefully but basically um, there's a leek that's that's ready to eat and with these multi-sowing you can often twist them out oh, that just came out a bit better and then so that, you know if you've never grown or harvested a leek you can see how how that wasn't difficult to pull out of the ground it's not gone in very deep with this multi-sowing I'm not transplanting them very deep but you still get a nice long stem it's just a bit more green than white actually tastes really nice and then if i put all these together together with a few vegetables i harvested earlier as they say and you can see that we've got a very nice range of produce from the garden grown without too much difficulty including the carrots from earlier and like tomatoes they growing in my polytunnel so you can grow tomatoes outside like I did there but for longer term tomatoes and also big ones like that a little bit of protection helps and um, so this is all grown in Somerset very local and chilies they, they grew outside actually on containers over there red cabbage that's grown all organic and naturally grown full of flavor I think this is one of the biggest differences with homegrown is that you get a lot more taste and that's what a food festival in this area is about you know our wonderful climate we've got in southwestern UK um, is actually really good for growing a wide range of produce all year round as well so if you want to find out more about how I'm doing this for example and how I can explain to you to do it more easily do check out my books um, I've written 10 books now and the latest one is all about no digging how how to make it really easy and also see my YouTube channel because there's a lot of nice videos there that will tell you more about doing it.